Hey everyone, and welcome to the Jumanshire Conference. I'm Steve Burge, your host for this event, and I'm delighted to welcome back Victor Vogel. Uh, Victor works for Plesk, the hosting control panel company, and Victor's been a good friend for a, a long time. He's been deeply involved in the Joomla community, and he produces extensions like other people produce waffles for breakfast. He has, I think, 150, maybe 250, Victor, you, you can correct me, for all sorts of uses. He's a very talented developer. And in this session, he's going to teach us how to update our legacy Joomla code so it's ready for the latest version of Joomla 3 and, more importantly, for Joomla 4. Victor, welcome. So thank you very much, Steve, for the introduction and for having me. And thank you for organizing this great event. And yeah, I have a lot of them, I have a lot of extension, uh, but uh, yeah, it was okay. <laughs> the number is quite right, but I don't have them all publicly available. So, but I wrote a lot of them. You're absolutely right. So, so today we will we will talk about, like you said, about how to get rid of legacy Joomla code. And I divided the session into more or less two parts. So the first part will be more. Uh, the theory, the theoretical part. So I will show you how I set up my environment, uh, how to start developing extensions actually. So, so it will be like an introduction to develop to the development of Joomla extension and with a lot of useful tips and tricks that I collected over the years. And then I would like to take a closer look at the plugins. So because I really love plugins. And we will see how plugins work and how to write plugins. I think it's a good and easy starting point if you want to start writing extensions. Maybe modules are even uh, easier to write, but plugins are quite cool, and so I really like them. So I would love to talk more about plugins. And in the second part, I think that will be the more interesting part. So I will take on. Um, Joomla plugin or module. So I thought about the login module that we have in the core now and just show you how you can prepare and make it more future ready. So it's an example of obviously, so you have to, to look after your own more extensions, um, how, to, how to use namespaces, how to rewrite it, how to create a stubs file um, that's a mapping to the new classes. So how to get rid of the J classes and we will do a live demo and I will just code it uh, live for you and show you how, how easy it, it can be done. And it's also good preparation for the Joomla 4 major release. But obviously there are some more changes required, uh, but we will do as much as possible to just be ready for Joomla 4. So let's start with the next slide. And if uh, so, brief note about me. So, me, uh, you, oh, Steve already told almost everything <laughs> that I wanted to say. So, and if you watched my presentation uh, presentation yesterday, you you know the slide already, and you also will know that the last <laughs> image in my slides. I'm not a big image fan. So, Victor Vogel, my name, and I'm located in Karlsruhe, Germany. I studied uh, studied computer science here at, at the KIT. And regarding Joomla, I'm using Joomla since 2005, so in the early beginning. So I, when I first saw it, it was still Mambo, but when I tried it the first time, it's it just Joomla 1.0 was released, and I, and I just uh, jumped on the wagon and never left it. So I really love Joomla, since, and I'm using it since 2005, and then I also started to write extensions, so I was very interested in this. And then also uh, created a, an own project, the Kubik Rubik Joomla extensions project. Like Steve said, I have a lot of extensions there. Just go, go there and check them out if you want. And I was also quite active in the Joomla project for some years, uh, like the product leadership team and security team and volunteer engagement team. But yeah, it got a little bit cold now, so I don't have that much time anymore. Uh, and in my main job, like uh, Steve also said, I am working for Plesk, so as the um, extension developer and tech, tech evangelist, and we, it's a server management platform for professionals, and I wrote, for instance, I wrote the Joomla toolkit for Plesk, so that you can manage all your Joomla instances on the server using just one management tool. Okay, that's enough, I think, for me, so 
Um, let's start with the basics of the development, you know, development of extensions. So um, if you want to write extensions, you should at least know what, what different types we have in Joomla. I think that's the first step. So first of all, as you know, most know the components and uh, complete applications. So within the Joomla instance, uh, they have an own administrator interface, they have routing, they have, uh, they have templates, you know how components uh, look like, how they work. They're using the MVC pattern, model view controller pattern. And um, they have an out the output of the extension uh, is done via views. So in the main area of the template you know, where the component is loaded, and the next type um, is one is my favorite type of plugins. So they're, they're triggered and work mainly in the background and uh, divided into different types like the system group, content group, user group, and so on. And they usually manipulate the data or control the flow, but they can also create output. They're not mainly done to create output, but there are some plugins that, uh, that are creating output. I think it was the vote, content vote plugin in the content group. That, have, uh, that, uh, that plugin has a temple folder and you can also override this. So this is quite cool that you even can override the um, plugin output using the temple uh, feature. Then we have the modules. So they display the output on specified template positions. So you're in a template, you can you have module positions, and then you can uh, you can assign the modules to to a specific position, and then the, this module is will be loaded on this position, and also define on which pages um, the modules are loaded and so on. And um, so, and they mostly work closely together with components, like the login module for the user component, uh, the menu model, or if you have a guestbook or a forum, so you can show the latest entries of the, of the guestbook and get the data from the component, from the tables of the component. And like we have the templates and they define the output obviously and and provide placeholders for the content that is loaded via the components or the modules and so on. There are also other types. They are defined as types like packages or libraries, but uh, those these four are the main. Um, so I'm I'm concentrating. I'm focused on the first three. I I, I I modified a lot of templates, but I never released any templates. So this is not my strength. So. And now I would like to look on the second one. So let's take a closer look on pl at plugins and what are plugins and how they do work. So the reason why I wanted to talk about plugins is, like I said, I really love them. So if you look into my extension list, my portfolio of my extensions, you will find a lot of them because they are not really hard to write and to understand. If you want to understand how they work with the event page and all so on, it's not really hard to write. And the, on top of it, they give you so much power over the system, over the control, over the workflow, uh, over the used components, if they're using plugins, if they're triggering them. I will show you some examples later. So plugins provide uh, functions uh, which are associated with trigger events. So this is how it works. That's a trigger, trigger uh, driven. Um, and they're using the observer design pattern. Uh, so this means that you can register custom code in this trigger events, and this code is called and executed uh, by the global event handler. So this makes Joomla really powerful and, and also extensible. So for instance, if a party developer can use trigger events in his own extension, if you're writing a component, you can just define your own events, trigger events, like hooks, and and this allows other extensions to, to respond to the actions or to control the data. So this means you can easily extend functionalities of, of such components uh, by own plugins. And in my opinion, this makes the components more valuable. And as I said, um, plugins usually manipulate data or the control of, of the flow of the workflow, but they can also have an not the usual case. And 
like I said, uh, plugins are divided into different types or groups. And we have many predefined types in the core, like the system, like the content type, the user type, and we have many more. I will show you a little more uh, what types we have and what they're doing actually. So the system type is a special type because, uh, because it's always triggered. So in each request it's by the Joomla application. So that means if you are writing a plugin that should be triggered on each request, like, um, like manipulating of HTML code of the, of the, if the code was rendered and you want to change something in the, in the rendered code, then you would, then you should uh, this type. But uh, if you don't trigger to ex uh, execute this special uh, your plugin uh, on the request, you can you can add limitations or execution checks within your code. So you can check for what what component was called, uh, what what view, uh, what what ID, and then say okay on this URL or this component should the plugin not be triggered and so on. So this this those checks can be done within the code, uh, but should use the system plugin that it, that the plugin is triggered on each request. So there are also um, the, the other types uh, depend on specific components, like the content type uh, that is related to the com content component, and it is usually triggered uh, only by the by the component by the com content component. In this case, uh, we uh, we have as you know also the HTML module that where you have an option to also also trigger their own content prepare trigger. So this is a special case. So uh, you can also trigger trigger plugins or hooks, uh, events uh, using uh, using a module. So it's up to you, so how you write the code. And the great thing about it is uh, that you can also define your own types for your extensions. So if you have a component, you can just define your own uh, plugin type and other, other developers or, or even the users can write the plugin using this type to extend your, your extension or your component. And let's take a look on, on the, the structure of a plugin. So actually you just need two files to have a fully functional plugin. This is quite cool. So we, um, the first one is the manifest file in the XML uh, format and um, the entry file, so, so the PHP file, which contains uh, the actual code. So we have also a name convention for classes and functions um, that follow the predefined name convention. And this is obviously required uh, so that Joomla finds, finds them and also can trigger the event functions properly. So you have just to follow the, the name conventions if you're writing plugins on, you have to take care about it. And uh, event methods. So as I said, we define custom code in our plugins and are using specific or predefined events um, that are triggered from the system or from the component. And in the Joomla core, we have, we have many predefined events and I would like to show you where you can find them. So I need to switch. So I will switch back and forth in this presentation. I hope I will not get lost. So if you go to the docs.juma.org, so the official documentation uh, website, there's, there's an entry plugin slash events. Um, so it was also trained in many languages. So, and, the, and now you, see, you can see uh, those bold uh, titles are the, uh, are the groups, so the types. So as you see, we have authentication type, the capture type, the content type. This is often used editors, extensions, and so on. And uh, where and the, the events are here uh, listed here. So as you see, for the content type, we have a lot of different events. So you can you can use each of the events in your own plugin uh, to manipulate to 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 do whatever you want with the with the content, for instance. So if you want to change something, if you want to add uh, add something to the title, you could you could use this event. In your in your plugin, and then just manipulate uh, the article object that you will get. So you will get a reference of the article object, and if you if anything that you change within your plugin will also remain in the main uh, flow. So uh, the cool thing is, you know, it's a reference, so you don't have to return anything. You just can manipulate the article object, and your changes will stay and will also be loaded accordingly. So, um, so I will show it a little bit in more more detail uh, later in, in the IDE. 
So I just wanted to show you. So we have a really good communication about all the plugin events. Like as a system plugin, so this is it's a special group with the events that are always triggered uh, within the system, so within the application, Joomla application. So this is a new event, just was just introduced in Joomla 4, but those are the typical ones, one event. So after initialize, after root. So if you want to manipulate something in the output when the HTML code was already uh, created, so with the database queries or whatever, so you would use the after, on after render event. Um, this is how, for instance, um, the cache plugin works. So it takes it, uh, it, it, it collects, um, or it, 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 it's executed in the on after render and takes the HTML code, the created, and stores it as a static file in the cache folder. And on after on a new request onto the same page, I think it's the on after initialize uh, hook that is used to check whether this page is already stored in the cache. And if yes, it just returns the, the, the already created HTML code. So it's, this is how like how the cache plugin works. It's quite easy. Just one the one step, uh, one event is for storing, and one event is just for delivering the stored uh, data. And we have of, obviously the user plugin and so on. Like uh, what we now have, what I'm using, for instance, to what is required if you have pro extensions and you need to add an update ID or, or API ID, whatever, then you can use specific um, ec uh, events for, for extensions, like on uh, before, on before save, on before, on after update, and so on. So each of them, have a, uh, each of them has a use case. So you need just to find what, what you really need. So um, like uh, what is a typical on content prepare is really often used. This is the, the event that also is used by the HTML module. So you will get a complete item object of the, of the content of the article and you can manipulate accordingly like you need. So example is the email clock PHP. Maybe we can take a look at this one later. So this is where you find information just, just but anyhow, it's just docs.joomla.org slash plugins slash events easily if you're looking for them. You can just Google it. So events for Joomla, for Joomla plugins. All right, so the XML manifest file. So this is the file where all the meta information is stored, the beta data, like the name, the version number, very important, uh, the, the license, the, whatever. So or everything that is required for, for Joomla. Then also the settings, so the configuration, uh, we have form field types there. You can use form field types there, they are predefined, but you can create your own form field types. This is something I also want, would like to show you in detail. And you can also define the update server there. So the Joomla knows, the Joomla, so it's basically it's just an XML, a link to an XML file where you, where, you, where you have the latest information about the extension, where you keep your, like if you're, if you're running an update, you will update your XML file uh, with the latest version of uh, with this version of the extension and also the download link to a zip file. And Joomla will then just run and checks the, for the version and shows you in, in backend an update that's an, uh, that an update is available and just download the zip file that is specified in this update server and XML file. Um, let, me, let me show you maybe a simple example so then that you know how it looks like. So I think it's, it's better to understand it. So th this should be familiar to you. So administrator is for the backend part. So we have the cache where cache files are stored, CLI, the command line interface scripts. We have the front end components. We have the includes, the layouts, blah, 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 the libraries, so the API, all CMS, the functions and classes, and the modules, the plugins. So let's open up plugin. So as you see in the plugins, in the first level, you see the, the types of the plugins. So we have the action log, capture, content. So here, here you will find all the content plugins that are in the core. So this is a vanilla installation of the latest Joomla version. Um, you have the fields, finally, for the confiner, and so, you know, they're quite specific for the editors. Um, then we have the private search, blah, blah, blah. Here, here, here you can find the system plugins. Like I said, it's a cache, a cache plugin is here. And maybe let's take a look. So you see the cache plugin contains of, just contains of two files. So this is the XML file that I mentioned. So this is the manifest file. This is, this is a part of important tag, like uh, the ID, so to say, 
of the Accenture, of the plugin. So the author, the creation date, and so on. So here we have the version, so you define the version here. Then the description. Uh, you can define language files as many as you need. So if you have a multilingual or you want to provide more languages, you can just uh, specify them here and put them also, obviously, uh, deliver them in the package as well. And this part is the configuration part. So this is what you see if you open the plugin manager and you see the settings. So the fields for the settings. So as you see, so we have the, the browser cache uh, setting, uh, configuration option. So it uses the type as radio type and it sets the default value. So this is, uh, this is what I wanted to show you. So the types are predefined. We have a lot of predefined types. But uh, what's also great, uh, what is great, um, so it's quite flexible. You can add, add as many types as you need in your own types. So you don't have to rely only on the core types. You can extend it like you need. So it's really flexible. Joomla is great, by the way. So let me show you. Um, let me show you the types. Uh, this is, I think I opened the page. Yes, I opened already. So also in the documentation, you can find the standard form field types. And the, the list contain, uh, contains all the, all the types that you already can use directly out of the box without having to think about how to implement them or how to write them. So you don't have to write your own uh, types. So a lot of pieces, I, uh, many of the types I have never used in my, in my extensions. So one of the default standard type that you always uh, will use is, this is text. So an input field, input field, text field or text area for a big, for more content. Or what I, what I also like to use is, um, is like, uh, like the list. So you have a yes, no, uh, yes, no, this drop down list. But you can also use like uh, a type, a category type. So you will, it will be a drop down with all the check, uh, with all the categories that you have already that you have defined, that you have in the system or use the checkbox. So you see there are a lot of, already a lot of predefined types that you can use out of the box. And you can write and extend the system and write your own types. You can find it also in the standard from few types in the documentation, in the official documentation. So let's, well, let's go back to, all right, this is the benefits file. Now we open the cache PHP. So this is the entry point. So this is, this should be familiar to you. So this is what you use that you cannot uh, call the cache PHP file directly in your browser. It will just stop the execution. It will not go further. And if you're coming through the application, through the system, through the application, uh, this constant is set and you, you will go on. So this will be executed. So this is what I talk, talked about. This, this is the, um, the name convention. So it's always PLG that the, the type of the plugin and then the name of the plugin is cache in this case, cache. So now Joomla will find this class and also, uh, also uh, execute it. You will have some properties. So what, what do we, the uh, uh, interesting part would be what, what event trigger is. So as you see on after initialize. Here we use this event trigger, if I go Back, I go back. Uh, to the, so it's a system. I see this trigger is used not to initialize. And if you go to the documentation, you see it has no parameters. It's just called. It's triggered after the framework has loaded and the application has method has been called. All right. There's no parameters, no arguments. Oh, that's that's right. So we check whether we are not in the administrator. So we don't want to cache the backend. You never want to cache them. But you. It's blah, blah, blah. I think this is not that important now, but we will come to this later. But you see, it stores the data. It's, it gets the body and stores the data. Uh, stores the data, uh, blah, blah, blah. Where is it? The string names. Yeah, so it's somewhere here. And on after render. Oh, no, sorry. It doesn't store it. I'm, 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 this string, it's just echoes it. So it takes the the stored, the static, uh, the stored HTML code and dumps just the page, HTML page directly and, gen and then just close the application. So this is just the, just the output, what, everything what it contains, what, what is in the static file, the cache file. And the cache is created in on after render in this trigger event. 
It checks whether you are not a guest. If you are not a guest, if you are a guest, you will, you will not catch it. If you are not a guest, if you are logged in, uh, you will always get the latest version of the page. But if you are a guest, uh, then or, you, or, or no messages are defined, you will you will um, uh, on it. We will. What do we do? Ah, no. ah, look at this. The, the thing, we saw it in the on after response. Okay, this is another trigger point. So we, we do the configuration here. So set the caching on, on true, and then we just store it in the on after response. response. So a little bit different like I expected it. But you see how it works. So we, they are using, we are using here some events, and then we are doing our own stuff that we need. So this is how the cache plugin works, actually. This is all. And then we have, it has some special feature that we'll, we're introduced later in the 3.5 version, like exclusion of, of specific menu items or, or components and so on, or URLs. Um, right, this is how it works. This is, how it works. This is the complete cache plugin, page cache plugin. Okay, back to the presentation. Um, sadly, I cannot, you, you haven't seen the update server mechanism or the, the tag because the core extensions are not using them. I can show it in one of my extensions if you, if you like uh, to, to, to show you how it works, how, we, how you set it. So the question is how they are triggered. So you have the plugin, then um, there's some, they are triggered by, in this case, it was existing, but if you, for instance, it's a content plugin, it's, just, it's triggered by the component or so. So it's also quite easy to trigger Plugins. So this is the Joomla 3.x. So what we have now is a major version. And um, so here you see we get the we get the global event dispatcher object. Then we import the import the the plugins uh, and the type the plugins that we need. So in this case from the type content. And then we just trigger it. We just use the trigger function and the first Argument, the argument is the event, the event name, in this case is on content prepare. So if we have a content plugin with this trigger, with this event on content prepare, our, our plugin will be called. It's a call user func area. So it's just a callback in this function. And, and the second parameter you see, we, we are sending an array uh, with, uh, with the arguments that will be used or that's uh, or sent to the to our to our plugin to our function, and in this case we have four of them. So it's one. The first one is the context. That's pretty cool that we have that we set the context with uh, with the call, because you can then limit your plugin to specific specific pages, specific uh, rules, whatever such specific rules like. Or execute my code, and if you are in, a, in the article view, in this case, it's the article view. So it's content, the component um, dot article, and the article is the is the view. And if we are not, if you are sending dot block or dot whatever featured, then you can just just return and do not change or manipulate the item object. And this is then up to you. Yeah, so this is quite quite useful. And then we have the item in this case. It's a reference to the item object. And that, that's what I said. It's quite, quite easy to manipulate this item object in your code, in your function, in your plugin. And uh, then just, yeah, just, just manipulate it as you need. In Joomla 4, it was a little bit, it was changed a little bit. So we import the plugin. So we don't need to get the dispatcher, the, the, the global event dispatcher object. We can use factory get application and trigger the event, and then the same you see the same arguments are transferred. So it's not a big change. So it's really easy to to adapt it to the to the new style. But uh, overall, this is the legacy method. So uh, it's, it's so called the old style in Joomla, um, and this will be removed as far as I know in Joomla five. It's planned to be removed and. You should go directly, not using this trigger event uh, helper plugin, uh, helper function, but uh, should go directly through the dispatcher and and handle the return uh, object uh, directly instead of going through this method. But this will work at least for Joomla three and four. If you if you understand how it works, you can also later adjust to the new way to 
to trigger plugins. All right, so now coming, uh, we're leaving the Joomla uh, plugins for now and looking on the architecture of the Joomla, so just an overall. So first of all, use the API as much as possible. Uh, so do not reinvent the, the wheel, like uh, writing own functions for database connection or curl requests, whatever you, you're planning to do. So check the API in detail and take as much as possible. So, so the API is quite, quite huge. So it provides you a lot of many classes and functions that, that are already tested in wild, you know, and are also maintained by the Joomla team. So use the power of Joomla. And I will show you where, where the link leads to. Uh, wait a second. So we have the Joomla API. So it's the api.joomla.org um, URL. And then you see what uh, the, the API, the, so you see the namespaces, the packages, also the deprecated classes and so on. So this will help you to go through, but you don't really need to look at this. This uh, index uh, page, you can, you can, if you're using an IDE, so in, uh, integrated development environment, you can just jump through the code using the environment. But it's, it's not that bad. So you can go through it and then you see on, in one, with one click on one on, in the list of what classes we have, what namespaces we have. It, it had a quite, you know, it's quite good overview. Like uh, Yuri, for instance, if you go here, you can see this and blah, 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 and so on. So just go through it and then you can get a lot of information about the functions. But as I said, um, I don't really need this, except if I'm somewhere where I don't have access to my IDE, I could take a look here, but uh, usually I just look into the code directly. But it's not that bad to have an overview of all the functions and classes that we have in the API. Okay. Uh, so the next point is the uh, MVC pattern. So this uh, you will come across you will come up across it uh, if you uh, start to uh, writing components. Uh, but uh, if if you start with plugins and modules, it is not that relevant for you now. But uh, you know, uh, so the MVC stands for model viewing controller. So the model is the is the data model, so it defines the data structure and the data handling. So all the all the SQL uh, database connections um, are done there. So we have the view is the presentation is a presentation, so it defines uh, the display and what you see uh, in your browser. The control is a program control and it con contains the control logic. So if a request comes in, or, uh, then it's it's handled by the controller. The information, the data is, is gained from the model, is retrieved from the model, and the view shows the, 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 the information, uh, so in a, in a prepared way. And uh, what also cool, uh, in the, what we will also have is, uh, and what makes Juma also very strong is uh, the overrides, the override possibilities, the overrides, and allow to the user, so us, to customize the output easily. Um, and also in an update safe way. So if you have overrides, you can you can update uh, even if the view is changed or updated or or something changes there, uh, you still your your changes will still remain. This can also lead to problems if some uh, some variable names are changed. But what should not happen, but happens sometimes with the party extensions, especially. Uh, then of obviously your right could also throw ever so, but this is just a side note, not related to our talk now. Mm. And the cool thing is you can also write layouts and not only the not only component views but also modules and even plugin views, uh, plugin templates. Sorry, so it's quite powerful. So keep in mind, keep in mind. So now we come to the more interesting part, so the important classes and functions. And Joomla 3.8 introduced the, introduced the usage of namespaces. So if you're not familiar with it, so it's a way to of encapsulating the items. And why we are doing this is this approach solves several problems like name collisions. 
So that's the reason we all we always had uh, the J blah 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 classes, J factory, J user, J object, and so on. Uh, but now we don't need it anymore, so we can get rid of the J classes, and they're already set as to, to deprecated, and they will be removed. As if I'm not wrong, I checked it. I think most of them will even stay in Joomla four. But it's better to already act now and remove them and use the new approach with the namespaces. And also another another feature is to 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 use aliases. So have really short uh, class names. If so, but this is just as uh, this is not really actually used in the project. But you could just create aliases and just work with aliases. But the best, the more most important thing is that we we now prevent uh, to have collisions. So, so if you have the same name, uh, the same class name, uh, like another, like another vendor or class or vendor library, then uh, you will get a PHP error, and it, it will not be. It will break your site, so to say. Uh, but now, with user namespaces, you stay in the namespace, and you can have the same class name, and nothing will break. And that's quite cool, I think. And everything will be rewritten now in, in Joomla this way. And so how we are doing this, this is what we, you will see in the second part of the presentation. We, we, we will create a stubs file. So we can, I will show you how to do it. And you can also take a look in the CMS PHP in the, in the libraries folder, how the mapping works and how the, the old class names are mapped to the new uh, namespaced uh, full qualified names. Um, and um, uh, just as, as, a, as an example, so use Joomla backslash CMS maps to libraries source uh, and blah blah blah. So if you are if you're using use Joomla slash backslash CMS backslash factory, then uh, the the class the fun you will find the, the file under libraries source factory .php. So this is a quite uh, a helper for you to to navigate through to the libraries folder. All right, so. One of the most used and that you really will encounter a lot is the factory. Uh, it's a factory class, so it's a design pattern to just use one instance per object. So, like if you need a user object, you will call factory get user or get document or get DBO for the database. Then you can execute your your SQL queries and so on. And just take a look at the libraries source factory.php and then you can find all what all the objects that you can get retrieved using the factory class. But there are of course a lot of other really good, uh, really important uh, functions that you will uh, use often, like the input class uh, for the processing of queries requests. This is very important. So the, the, the values are validated there, you can clean them and so on. Also important from security point of view, the document processing, so the uh, like document class for HTML is the default one, but you can also return JSON, XML, etc. And also uh, other ones like HTML helper for the small HTML uh, uh, from uh, blocks. Uh, HTTP is quite important if you're doing uh, if you have to if you need some HTTP requests like curl requests to a, to an external API. So you wouldn't write your curl init whatever uh, code. You would just use the HTTP uh, class, and uh, Joomla will detect automatically what it can use, and we will detect uh, will use the best possible way to get the information. The same with email, you, will, you don't write uh, the mail, uh, email you're on your own, you just use the mail class. Your, your, your route for routing text is very important for multilingual, especially to, to load the, the content of, of language constants and so on. So they are the typical classes that you will encounter often. And now to the best practices. practices. So in my case, as a, more my best practices. I know there are a lot of other possible uh, possible ways to to write and develop extensions and how to deploy them and so on. But this is what I really like and new and, and do. So obviously I work locally and I have a um, Mac Pro, so I have Man Pro as a local web server. If you're on Windows, you would use XAMPP or Web Server or whatever. Easy PHP. There are a lot of out there for the local web server and and this is very, very important using IDE. So I use PHP Storm, as you already saw. I have seen. 
Uh, but there are also other others out there like NetBeans, Eclipse, and so on. So I, I, I actually I used NetBeans for many years, but then I switched to PHP Storm. It's just, but I needed three tries, so never give up. I think it's easier to change if you really have a project, and then you just change and stick to it, and then go and then fight through. But when I change, and then now I'm really happy that I selected PHP Storm. It's really powerful. It has so many great features. Like like what I use also is a builder thing builder to create the packages. I have a deep, the direct deployment possibilities. I connect via SSH to my server and can deploy directly. It's, it supports Git perfectly, and so on. So it's it's it also supports Joomla. There's also Joomla uh, plugin for it, and so on. So it's really a powerful IDE. If you want, I can show you some features uh, also later in the demo, but I need to rush a little bit now. So um, best practice, use always the update server. And uh, that's very important also for the user to, who are using your uh, extension. So to, to notify them if, they, if, you run, if you release a new update, new version, especially if you have a security issue or security problem, or solve to fix one. And yeah, use the update server mechanism that's, that's built in Joomla. Use a build script. So in my case, I use Flink. I prefer it's quite quite easy to write uh, your own rules using XML file. And um, so you know, if you if you have a component, so the, the files are, are distributed everywhere. So you have a language folder, you have a media, in media you have your files, and it's quite error prone if you do it by hand. You know, nobody should do it by hand. So builders are quite good. Um, I, let me hurry a little bit because I want to come to the demo. So use code sniffer, code style formatting, uh, formatting by the IDE. This is what I always use. Uh, so you have to define your own rules and then it, the code will be formatted like you need it. Um, so in the settings in Joomla and development environment, just quickly. So always use the latest Joomla version. Do not install demo data. They are not really needed if you write your own plugins, your own stuff. Uh, then always uh, use the Joomla debugger. So if you go to the global settings, you can activate the debugger and you have a console output there. So it's quite useful to find bottlenecks. Uh, so I had once, uh, I think I just I wrote quickly a module and then uh, it was so slow. And then I saw that all, I think it had, it created a thousand database crashes. Well, I don't know what it was, but um, it was easy to find the bottleneck um, there by just checking the output, the debug output. So just use it and it will help you to see where the problem is. The cool thing is you can, you can, you get also a, like a waterfall um, of all the trigger points and then you can see what trigger points used, how many memory, how many time, how much time. And then um, you can just check the, those plugins that, uh, uh, that are using, they are triggering this event or they're using these events or providing these events. And also disable uh, search engine or friendly URLs um, so you, that you see the parameters so, they are, so that you can play with them and then you can add your checks and so on so you don't need the search URLs or on. And the dev development environment, so the settings, um, so always set the level to maximum, the PHP error level, and also check logs, what is protocol there. Um, increase the server limits just uh, to have, uh, have fun coding. But obviously, test under conditions uh, if you want to release it publicly to the, to the community. Uh, this is, I think, one of the most important points on this list. Always, always, always using a debugger. Go so and go through the system, and this will help you greatly to follow the workflow to understand how Joomla actually works. What what variables are defined and so on, what the trace is. You can just switch and go to the complete workflow, to the complete flow. And this will help you greatly to understand and to, to get better. Use a debugger. And it's quite easy. So for, you can just include Xdebug as uh, supported out of the box in PHP Store. And always use one project uh, per Joomla instance. OK, that's obvious. So, so you don't mix them up. So just keep them separate and keep it clean. So finally, the demo for the, the second part for reflecting old extensions. So let me open an old extension. So to say old, so they are still <laughs> running on so many websites. Um, and my idea was to go with a login. So it's, I think it's uh, 
quite easy to understand and see. All right, so first what we want to do is to get rid of the J blah, blah, blah uh, classes. So what we see is uh, they are not marked as deprecated. So this will not help us. It, will, it is quite hard to see, to spot them and to change it because you would have to look and to find uh, the mapped uh, new uh, fully qualified um, namespace classes. So that's the reason why um, the stubs generator was created. So what you are doing, actually, you will go, you go to the GitHub repository, and you must, you know, we have the, you know, everything on GitHub, and then the branch stays staging, uh, staging, and you, you open the, wait a second, let me make it a little bit bigger. So first of all, we need a generator PHP file. So we go to build, and there, you have, there we go. So we have the stub generator.php here. This is, um, this is the generator to create the, the, the stub file, the mapping, the alias mapping to the new classes. So if you're going to create stubs by holding mapped classes, all right. Um, so you can download it and just put it uh, into, the, into the includes folder. What I'm doing now is make it easier. So I get the raw output, we copy, pay, copy it, I will go back to my to my project. So then I will create as the stubs file within the includes folder. Okay, let's click on includes. I go on new. I will create a PHP file. Let's call it stub generator, like the original. But you don't. You can call it whatever you want. And then I will just paste the stubs generator. So I just copy paste it here. All right, now we have the stub generator. What we have to do now is to open the terminal. Oh, I'm not sure I can see it in the presenter view. Oh, wait a second. I think I need to switch back uh, quickly. What you're, now, what you're not doing, so it's a CLI utility, so a CLI script. So you need to run it via the terminal. I hope you still can see it. So what I'm doing, let me check where I am. Uh, this is right path, yes. It's quite easy. You just type PHP, then you open, then you run uh, this file includes stubs. Okay, just PHP uh, includes stubs stub generator. Okay, this takes one second, whatever. So stubs files were written. Okay, now I can close the terminal. Um, if you encounter uh, an issue, if PHP is not set, you can define it in the settings of PHP Storm. I, I will show you. So this is a error, trouble, or whatever. So, so what was created you know, to avoid errors here um, is tabs PHP. In the root folder, a new class, a new file was created. It called, uh, the name is tabs PHP, and it contains all the, all the proper mapping to the new aliases. So if you just open it, like jmodel admin is set as deprecated. And this is what's important, what will help us in the IDE to spot those deprecated classes. And it extends this one. So this is the new, the new class that should be used. And this is the old one. And these tabs will contain also errors. You just can ignore them because like, uh, let's find one, like this one. This is not possible because this version is already a final class and you cannot extend from a, from a final class. So it's, it will show you an error in the ID, but you can just ignore it. It doesn't matter. We just need the, the mapping. All right. So now I go back to my to my to the mod login PHP, and now you see they are, they are deprecated, marked as deprecated, and that's cool because if I click on command and click on click on it on the chat factory, it will open the steps file and says from where what is the new uh, what is the proper address what is the new class. So I have to use this one to, to replace JFactory. What you could use is like this, but I don't prefer the inline, you know, the inline way. What I prefer is just to go there, you just use. All right, now, now you imported, uh, you, you set an alias to factory, so to say. You imported this class, and then you can just use factory directly in, in the core, uh, in, in your code. So that's, that's all. So I replace factory. All right, so, and you go through the list and do the same for all, all of the deprecated classes. 
like um, let me do it like this and then copy copy this and do this now you see uh, you don't have any deprecate classes there if you open the helper you will see there are a lot more left so this is what you have to do oh, not that more but the cool thing is if you're using PHP storm you can go to code inspect code uh, this file and then you get a warning, so code blah, 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 code style, with usage. I don't see it, where is it? Hey, uh, hey, Victor? Yes. Would you mind if we open this up quickly to questions at this point? We have a couple of minutes left. Yeah, sure, sure, why not? Up to um, and so for those of you guys who have been listening to Victor so far, do you have any questions on the, on the code updates he's shown you? Okay, no, it, it seems like you've done a good job of explaining it. Yeah, hey, cool. Okay, question for you. How many of your extensions are ready for Joomla 4? Uh, to be honest, I, I have never tested it because I okay. didn't at that time. Um, so I introduced the Pro extensions in the beginning of the year, so I rewrote everything there. But the problem is I've never really tested them on, on Joomla 4, uh, on the latest alpha release, whatever. But I'm pretty sure there are some things that are using outdated thing that were deprecated already and I would have to go through them and just just make them make them compatible. Cool. But I think it's not a lot of work to do, it's just maybe some some small changes, some sort. Okay, so so you're feeling optimistic about the move to Joomla 4? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very really optimistic. Yeah. Cool. Well thank you so much, Victor. That was uh two excellent sessions over the last couple of days. Thank you very much for having me man. Oh you're welcome. It was, it was a pleasure for me. And uh, guys, if you have any questions, as uh, I said last time, uh, then just drop me an email or just contact me using my Twitter handle, handler, then just write me and contact me. Wonderful. It, um, one of the great things about having you present, Victor, is how much enthusiasm you always bring. <laughs> I can do it whenever you need me. Just call me <laughs> and just write me. I'm here for you, man. Cool. Thanks, everyone.